Good morning, boys and girls, and welcome to SGBC Children's Worship. My name is Auntie Grace, and I would like to welcome all of you joining us worship this morning. Now, before we worship, let's prepare our hearts to worship God, because God is spirit, and we should worship him in spirit and in truth. So what matters is whether your heart is um, focusing on Jesus, on our God, on our Lord. So let's prepare our heart. Let's bow our head and pray. All of us, let's come and thank the Lord our God. The Lord is our strength and our salvation. He is faithful and wise and full of compassion. Let us come and shout for joy, for the Lord is good. Let us open our hearts to welcome him. Let us praise the Lord together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now in John chapter 10, verse 27, Jesus said, My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. So have you decided whether you're going to follow Jesus? Let's sing this next song. We are all very familiar with and you can sing it with me, okay? Ready. Also in John chapter 11, verse 25, Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me will live even though he dies. So if we follow Jesus, we know that not only that we have resurrection, but we also have eternal life and we can be in heaven with him. So let's sing this next song together. I am the resurrection and the life.
Now, this morning, we're very happy to have Pastor Joy sharing God's word with us. Let's prepare our hearts to receive God's word and let's welcome Pastor Joyce. Hi kids, I'm Pastor Joyce and I'm here to share with you the mystery of Jesus taken from Matthew 24, 36 to 44. After Jesus had risen from the dead and lived with his disciples for another 40 days, he was taken up to heaven. Many could testify that he truly conquered death because he ate with them, talked with them, and even rose to the heavens right in front of their eyes until clouds hid him. While the disciples were still looking at the sky, taking everything in, two angels appeared and said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand here looking at the sky? Jesus has been taken away from you into heaven, but he will come back the same way you saw him go. Okay, so he will come back the same way we saw him go. So when is he coming back then? The problem is no one knows the day or hour that Jesus will be back. Not even the angels in the heavens know. Even Jesus does not know. Only God the Father knows, and that is the day when the kingdom of God is fully complete. You see, when Jesus was on earth, his message was about the coming kingdom of God. But when he died and rose again, that was the start of the kingdom of God. People can now enter into a relationship with God through following and believing in Jesus. People can now be freed from the bondage of sin because of his perfect sacrifice and all his disciples are now to share this good news of joining God's kingdom with everyone. But when Jesus comes back again, that will be the day for the full completion of God's kingdom. The party's getting started. God will bring justice to the world and make things right again. There will be a new heaven and a new earth. God will dwell in the holy city with his people, and he will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death, mourning, crying, or pain. So when will Jesus return? Now in Matthew 24, it said, The day when Jesus returns is like the days of Noah. Before the flood, people were eating and drinking. They were getting married. They were giving their daughters off to be married. They did all those happy things right up to the moment when Noah entered the ark. No one cared about Noah's message from God and the possible meaning behind such a big physical thing, the ark itself. Even though God had told Noah to tell the people to turn away from sin and return back to him, but no one listened and the world continued in evil and in selfish happiness. That is why God told Noah to build an ark as he would make things clean and right again. The people of Noah's days knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and took them all away. Likewise, that would be like the day when Jesus returns. It will be like two men working in the fields. One will be taken away and the other left there. Or two women working on a handmill, chatting away. But then when Jesus returns, one will be taken and the other will be left there. So Matthew 24 reminds us to keep watch because we do not know the day or the hour of when Jesus will return. Like an owner of a house, if we know a certain time or hour of that night when the robber is going to come and break into our house, we would keep watch and would not let the house be broken into. Likewise, we must be ready for the return of Jesus will come at a time when we don't expect him to. But how? How should we be ready for the return of Jesus? Well, first of all, he left us with an adventurous mission. He is involving us to be part of his awesome and great plan. And that is to share the good news of Jesus as creatively and as passionately as we can to all people, to all nations, and to the ends of the earth. Now, isn't this exciting to explore the unknowns, to meet new people, and to make a difference in this world while teaming up with God. Throughout history, we see many missionaries travel to new countries. They meet new people and learn new things. They also set up schools and churches to teach people more about the greater world and God. 
Now, even our country, Canada, owes a lot of its founding values, like freedom, rights, and tolerance, to the church and Christian faith. Of course, not everything goes as smoothly as they hope. Sickness, death, sin, and suffering are still things that everyone has to face. But through these challenges, everyone gets experience God's grace and love. So are you going to take part in this Jesus mission? What would you do to creatively and passionately share the good news of Jesus? I just hope that at the end of your life, when you meet God, you can joyfully say to Him, what you have given to me, I have used the best I could. And in return, He will say, well done, faithful and good servant. Come and share your master's happiness. Honestly, living a life without regret is probably one of the best things in the world. And I hope you can make that happen. Another way to be ready for the return of Jesus is to trust in God's timing. This is especially true for those who are going through rough time or feels like life has plateaued. But by trusting in God's timing, we actually live life differently because we are living with assurance and hope. Now the world had gone messier than ever. With instant communication, we are constantly aware of wars, sicknesses, suffering, bad leaders, and disasters. So we ask, when is Jesus coming back? I don't know, but I do know that God is really good with timing, and that is shown in Jesus' first coming 2,000 years ago. Sometimes you may wonder why God didn't send Jesus earlier and into the Old Testament. That way he could have saved more people. I'm sure God would have wanted that too, but the timing was just not right. It was not until 2,000 years ago when the Greco-Roman Empire had taken over the known Western world. And at that time, God knew it was the perfect timing. Why? Because one, the Greeks had unified the language of the known Western conquered world. People could now travel and do business with one language. And so if the gospel of Jesus was to be shared outside of the Jews, a unified language was necessary. Two, smooth roads were made to connect all the big cities and small towns. Some roads were even made out of marble stones. Traveling was so easy. And so when the Christians were persecuted in Jerusalem, they easily fled the city and brought the gospel to various places. Church leaders like Paul also traveled a lot to visit various churches and to help them grow spiritually. Three, the Roman Empire had strong military investment and power. Wherever there was a riot or chaos, the Roman Empire would send military there and settle the area. So the whole empire was rather safe from living and traveling. As long as you behave, pay up the taxes, the Roman Empire gave many religious freedom to everyone, especially to the Jews. Given these factors, the gospel of Jesus spread like wildfire when the Christians were persecuted for their faith. As they ran for safety, they naturally brought the hope of Jesus to various cities and faraway lands. Imagine if the roads were broken or unsafe, they would not have survived. And imagine if they didn't have a unified language in Greek, there would be no way to share about Jesus or even to ask for help. That is why God's timing is the best timing. Likewise, when Jesus returns a second time, I can guarantee you that God's timing will be perfect again. We may not know when, but we can keep watch and stay faithful to our God-given mission. We can also be assured that God will make everything right again and that He will comfort His people by His presence. So keep faith and live life without regrets. Thank you, Pastor Joyce, for a wonderful, wonderful message. So let us all pray together. Dear God, we thank you for your promise that you will return at a perfect time and make this world new again. Help us to hold fast to the mission of your gospel and help us to keep our faith in you in good times and in bad times. Help us to live a life that is pleasing to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Boys and girls, let's join me to do the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father who art in heaven, holy be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So that's it for our worship today. I hope to see you again next week. If you would like to join us in person, remember to register online at our church website. I'll see you again next week. Goodbye.